Hey, what's up, DIYers and Mike with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking furnaces today, and in the event that your furnace turns off at about maybe the one minute or two minute mark, maybe even before that, we're gonna talk about something. Is there a fan inside that room? We're gonna talk about how a fan can actually affect the operation and efficient flow and run of your furnace. Let's take a look. All right, DIYers inside the utility room. Let me hop to the opposite side. As you can see, here is our furnace. It is a Bryant brand and Bryant is under the carrier brand or family. And to the right side, yours might be on the left side. That's our main power switch. It is in the off position for safety purposes while I film this video. And let's take a look around. What is in utility rooms? Here is our water heater. You may have a tank, ours is tankless or on demand, however, in the event that you have a water heater within close proximity of your furnace, again, that's very likely in most homes, as well as a sump pump. We've got a radon system installed, but they're basically no different in looks. Ours just has a sealed cover to meet code for the radon system. Those two items have a lot of water in them. Again, the water heater and sump pump area. Well, unfortunately over time, and in our case, it happened to us too, when we moved in, we had an actual tank, not a tankless at the time, again, when we moved in. And unfortunately, maybe a month or two after we moved in, it began leaking water everywhere. And unfortunately, because the water was so hot, you can still see the stain it left. I need to clean that up. But again, it leaked water. And in addition, the plumbing that comes out of your sump pump area or chamber, that can leak as well. It goes all the way up and pushes the water outside and those rubber fittings or any fitting really such as this and the rubber fitting that's secured with the clamps those can leak and if they spray water everywhere guess what that could lead to water damage so what do we do as homeowners you may ask well we get fans right and we start doing our best to dry up the entire area that water leaked out on well that's where we begin our likely cause of what is happening to your furnace so again with that said if you've just recently experienced a leak whether it was your water heater or the sump pump chamber or plumbing and you've got a bunch of fans turned on and on top of that your furnace is within close proximity of the leak and fans running we are going to show you what that can do to your furnace so i am going to unscrew this long threaded screw it basically goes through the outer case or cover here and into the main portion of the furnace and i will pull this back and lift up carefully shift that to the side set it in a safe location and inside here a whole bunch of things you got your inducer fan inside there's your inducer you got your gas valve it's in the on position you got a bunch of wiring inside here you've got the control board your sight glass for your fault codes or error codes and down below in this section right here is your humongous blower motor and blower fan and coming inside here here are the burner tubes or chambers and right inside there you can see a little tab sticking up that is the igniter and once the system turns on, that will begin heating up to a point where it glows orange. And if all looks good, it will ignite the gas burners and produce the heat. However, I'm going to position the camera and show you what a fan in close proximity of your furnace will do. At this point, DIYers, I've got the camera positioned the way I want it. And in the upper left-hand corner, you can see the on-off toggle switch for the gas valve itself, as well as the support bar that directs the gas into the burner tubes and allows the system to heat. In addition, this wire right here feeds into your flame sensor. And that is a very likely cause of a furnace starting and then stopping within about maybe 10 to 15 seconds. So with that said, in the event that you watch this video and this is not the likelihood or cause of your furnace starting and then stopping, definitely check out the link scrolling above. We talk about the flame sensor itself and how that can affect the operation of your furnace. However, back to this video, I wanna direct our attention to the lower right-hand corner. You see a little sensor right here and I will bring the camera to the opposite side of this aluminum panel and inside there you can see the electrical wiring feeding into the switch or relay or sensor and in addition coming up here you can see an additional one right back there see it and that is very close to the igniter itself there's the little igniter tab that i showed just a bit ago and coming to the opposite side of that aluminum panel and right there you can see the brown base portion of that sensor again the exact same as this one right here 
Let me set the camera back down. And I wanna talk about those sensors. Some furnace technicians or DIYers will call those limit switches or limit sensors, while others will call them cutoff sensors. Regardless of what people call them, they are extremely important to the safe operation of your furnace. And the main purpose of them is to detect any rollback or sporadic behavior with the flames itself coming out of the burner tubes. And I said rollback, and what that means is when the burners are up and running and blowing all that heat downstream into the furnace, those flames should be perfectly straight and directing through those internal holes right inside the furnace. Again, perfectly straight and not shooting left, not shooting right, not shooting down, not shooting up, perfectly straight through each of their respective holes going inside the furnace. And in the event that they are not and the flames themselves are shooting up, maybe down, maybe left, or maybe right, and rolling back into this section of the furnace, guess what? These little sensors right there will detect that rollback or out of sequence burn, or others call it a burn flow interruption. These sensors themselves will again detect that and immediately send a signal to your motherboard or control panel via all your electrical wiring to inform the motherboard or control board that we got a big problem in this area and the system needs to be shut down. And at that point, the motherboard or control board immediately listens to the cutoff sensor's input and recommendation to shut the system down. And guess what? It shuts the system off, which is not what you want, right? Obviously not. You want a furnace that operates efficiently, properly, and safely, and does what it's exactly designed to do. Heat your home with no issues, right? So now that we understand the operation or purpose of the cutoff sensors or limit switches, I'm going to turn the furnace on and show you exactly what you do not want to see. What a fan, whether it's a portable fan like I showed you, or obviously we've seen some really interesting DIY things over the years, and we have actually seen an overhead ceiling fan mounted in the exact same room as the furnace, and obviously that caused issues. So again, I'm gonna turn the switch on in the upper right-hand corner. You're gonna see the furnace turn on, and all I'm going to do is gently blow into this section of the furnace and cause a slight interruption in the burner flames. However, not to a point where they are going to aggressively roll back into that section there to a point where the sensors will detect that rollback. I'm just going to give it a light blow just so you can see what a fan within close proximity of the furnace can actually do and it's not good. So here comes the furnace switch to the on position and it's going to turn on the blower fan and motor and it's going to run for about maybe 30 seconds to 90 seconds for a test phase. At this point, the inducer motor and fan have turned on, and all we are waiting for, again, is the power to be fed to the igniter. That will heat up, and the burners will ignite. And there it is. The igniter is heating up, and once it gets to a certain temperature, the burners will ignite. All six of my burners are up and running and as you take a close look of the flames themselves again they are perfectly in sync and being directed straight forward in a non-interrupted and efficient forward flow and the blower fan has now turned on to a higher setting and at this point again you see no flames rolling back in this section of the furnace so at this point I'm going to carefully blow into this section of the furnace and interrupt the flow of the burner flames again I I am not going to be aggressive to a point where it rolls back into this section and turns the furnace off. However, I want to show you what even a small amount of air being blown into that section will do to the burner flames. Did you see that? That was a pretty significant interruption with the efficiency of the burner flames going out of the burner tubes and through their respective holes. And again, that was a very light blow from my mouth. In the event that you have a large fan, whether it's a ceiling fan or a portable fan, and it's in the high setting, DIYers, there's no other way to put it, that will cause a significant interruption in the efficiency of your flames and they will roll back into this section and those sensors will immediately detect it and send that signal to the motherboard or control board and the system will shut down. Taking a step back and again, if you've got a fan like this in the high, even low setting, really, that's going to cause some issues to your furnace. 
All right, DIYers, leaving the utility room, we are now going to allow the furnace to run and heat up our home. Check this out, winter projects ahead of us. This is my mom and dad's 2003 GTX Sea-Doo. And I know what you're thinking, wife approved. I know I've got the awesomest wife that allowed me to bring this jet ski inside the home for maintenance. And we've got some visqueen laid down again. Winter projects ahead of us. Here's the DIY Raptor workstation, as you see here. And whether you're interested or not, we'll post them down below in the comment section as well as the description section. Video links on how to build your own skateboards. Again, DIYers, we hope this helps. Hey, do us a favor, below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon, click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. And here is our cryptocurrency token. Check out toolboxtoken.com. We're having a lot of fun with that. Thanks again for watching.